Hey guys, when I did my grocery haul, somebody had asked me to show how I cook my, my um, bone broth. And so I'm going to show you, basically I cook my, my Boston butt pork roast and I do like pulled, like pulled pork with that. And then I keep the bone and that's how I do the bone broth. So I'm going to show you what I do for seasoning my Boston butt. Okay, okay so what I have here is a, um, about almost an eight pound Boston butt pork roast. It has to be a Boston butt. The Boston butt is the one that has the nice thick layer of fat here. I'm going to season the bottom side first and then I'm going to flip it over and season the top. There are sometimes, if I'm just, if I'm not doing bone broth and I'm just doing um, just pulled pork, like barbecue pulled pork, I don't season it at all. I just cook it like this on high for about six or seven hours. I pull the bone out. I strip most of the fat off of it and then I add the barbecue sauce and I pull the pork and that's how I do my pulled pork. But since I'm doing bone broth, I'm going to season it because I want my broth to have a little bit of flavor to it. So what do I have for seasoning? Not a whole lot actually. Um, I have pink salt. So I'm going to, and I want to like season it generously with salt because you know with doing keto, you need the salt because your body flushes out salt very easily. All right, and then I have black pepper. Oops. I have onion powder. And I don't like rub it on or anything. Celery salt, because it's gonna get all flushed out in the slow cooker. So I just have a crock pot here right now and then garlic powder. I have the um, crock pot right here at high. I'll probably cook it on high for, I don't know, maybe like two hours just to let the cooking process really get going. And um, then I will switch it to low and let it cook. I wanted to, if, there, if I was only cooking it, um, Like I wanted it to be done this evening, I would cook it on high for like seven hours. But I want it, I don't want it to be done this evening because I got things to do this evening. So I'm gonna cook it on low for um until tomorrow morning. It is right now it is eight o'clock on Saturday morning. So if I look if I look at it and I look like the meat is done this evening before I leave to go to my event, then I will pull the meat off and just let the bone broth cook and that's you know maybe I'll maybe I will do that now and I'm thinking about it that might be better I'm gonna let it cook on high for like six or seven hours and I'll pull the meat off that way the meat if you cook the meat too long it gets like mealy like real mushy and I do not like that at all um it, it does not set well in my stomach when it's like that and yeah so I think I will do that so six or seven hours from now will be three or four o'clock that yeah that'll be perfect four o'clock I'll be back home from one of my errands so I'll do it then and I'll come back and show that me pulling the, the meat off the bone then what I'll do is I'll put the meat the, um, the bone back in the juice and I'll fill it with water and I'll let that cook down really good overnight I'll probably add a little uh, celery as well because I kind of just like the flavor. If I had mushrooms, I'd add mushrooms. Um, yeah. So, I mean, that's really it right there. I'm going to put the lid on it. You don't seal the lid. You just place the lid on there. I'm going to leave it on high. And I'll come back at about um, 3.30 maybe and show me pulling the meat off the bone. Okay, so it is 4 o'clock. At um, 1 o'clock, I tested the meat, and it was still tough in the center. So I just put it on low. I switched it from high to low. So that was at 5 hours, and um, I left it. Now I'm back home, and I can see it's tender. And then if you want to test it with the food thermometer, you can do that as well. But you can see it's, it's well cooked all the way through. I'm at... Oh gosh, it's going, going, going. 190? No, it's still going. 200? It's well cooked. I don't need to keep waiting for that. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take it out, 
pull the meat off, leave the bone in. I'm gonna take the fat out and I'm gonna show you what I'm gonna do with the fat. Okay, so this is what I have here. I have the meat that I've pulled off the bone. I put the bone back into the broth and I filled the water up about to where it's like almost an inch from the top of the crock pot. I put the crock pot back on high and I'm gonna leave it on high until it starts boiling again. I got the lid back on it. Once it goes on um, boiling, I'll put it on low and I'm gonna leave that until sometime tomorrow morning. So that's done with that. This is the fat from that came off the bottom of the pork. There's a little bit of meat, meat in there. I'm probably gonna, let me drain it a little bit onto into the, um, thing, cause I, I want most of that juice to go back into the broth. And what I'm gonna do with this, I used to, I've made this for years and years, but I used to just throw the fat away before I was ketogenic. And then when I learned the value of the fat, and I know obviously the flavor is amazing, I decided to keep the fat. So I got just the pan lines, and I add a little bit of pink salt, and a little bit of Tony's, that's like my favorite Cajun seasoning. Probably everybody who, every Southern girl loves it. And I have the oven on 425, and I'm gonna stick this in the oven and let it crisp up. So here that goes. And I've cut the meat um, so that it's kind of chunky, and I'm just taking two big forks and pulling that pork apart. This you can mix with um, barbecue sauce. You can eat it just like this. It's amazing. Um, have it with veggies, whatever. But our favorite is to have it with barbecue sauce, except my son doesn't like barbecue sauce, so I'll keep some plain out for him. But, I mean, that's it. It's, it's I already tasted it. Um, let me... Get down here. Yeah, it's delicious. It's like amazing. Um, the house smells amazing. Yeah, but that's it. That's how I do my pulled pork. And then I use that um, J. Hughes sugar-free uh, barbecue sauce. And you can make it for people who eat um, bread. You can make pulled pork sandwiches. And then for the rest of us, you have like a pulled pork plate. I freeze it. It freezes beautifully. Um, and then I give some away to my parents because my mom loves pulled pork. So, yep, that is exactly how I do the pulled pork. I'll be back. Let me put it like this. I'll be back to show that um, toasted fat. Okay. Okay. William is gonna taste test for us. William's my twelve year old, and he's a picky eater, but he does like <laughs> <laughs> he does like pork. So go ahead and taste it. Let me know if it's like seasoned enough or if you like it. If you don't like for sure. It's good. Mm -hmm. Like, you would eat it plain like that, or do you think it needs something? Probably, I would eat it with ketchup, but you could eat it plain, too. So. What about, like, on a sandwich? Do you think you would have it mm -hmm. on a sandwich? I mean, for those that eat bread, I know you still eat bread sometimes, so. But you, don't have to have, but you don't have to have bread with it. You think you could eat that, like, as, like, a main mm -hmm. course? Okay. All right. Thank you, dear. All right, and this is the barbecue pulled pork. I took about probably a little bit more than half of the pork there. We've already eaten some of it because this is so delicious. Um, but I combined about a half a bottle of the sugar-free uh, barbecue sauce and about a, probably less than a quarter of a bottle, like less than one ounce of the liquid smoke. That gives it a nice smoky flavor. I have it in the uh, Pyrex dish. I'm gonna bake that in the oven just for like maybe 20 minutes to get it, the barbecue sauce hot. And that'll be a perfect pulled pork, barbecue pulled pork. Okay, so I baked that fat at 425 for 10 minutes, and then I put it under the broiler for about three minutes. And you can see it's like all nice and crispy, fat, but it's still like fatty. Oh gosh, it's like a nice crust on the outside. It's I can't wait to eat that. But yeah, so that's it. That's how I do my pork roast. So nine dollars, ten dollars, and this is going to give us a ton of meals and deliciousness, healthy, perfect for keto.